This is Investment Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Daily live streaming interactive featuring Mrs. Backup. Subscribe, hit the notification, smash the likes. Now, here's Backup Brad Kimes. Come on in. Good morning and welcome back to Investment Perspectives, everybody. We're going to talk about today the ISO 20022 and how RippleNet has joined the Standardization Committee committee or the Standards Body for that network. Now, this is interesting because we're going to go back and just revisit really quickly about how R3 has partnered with SWIFT for payment solution. And let's let's start there as a recap and then let's talk about Ripple and RippleNet. We have to remember Ripple is a blockchain infrastructure company. RippleNet is a payments network of over well over 300 uh, partners at this point and a cloud-based services uh, payments platform with all of the compliance and governance built into that, that network as well. So we're going to talk about all of those things. Let's get to this. Let's start with the older article just as a recap here. This is from a year ago, almost a year ago to today. It was April twenty, April thirtieth, uh, twenty nineteen. Uh, so just a little while ago. So blockchain core to settler Ripple and Swift, uh, a marriage uh, trio, and basically a union. And but they're asking the question: Could all these companies work together? And in short, I have to say, I believe the answer is yes. Now, just as a recap here about R3 and the Corda Settler, which is a settlement option that exists on the Corda platform. Okay, so R3 launched its new Corda Settler platform using Ripple's XRP. But here it comes. In January, Swift announced a partnership with R3. They are collaborating to test Corda Settlers a year ago, specifically integrated with GPI with the Corda Settler. However, a Corda Settler depends on the XRP token. Now, it does go on further here to talk about it. they will expand ultimately to other assets as well. But let me read this here. What is the Quarter Settler? Uh, R3 announced that Quarter Settler is designed in such a way to give companies fast, secure, reliable way to move crypto and traditional assets on a distributed ledger. The Quarter Settler app is an open source decentralized application that runs on Quarter blockchain. It is aimed to facilitate global crypto payments across enterprise blockchain networks with Ripple's XRP as its base currency. Corda Settler thereby focuses on the settlement of payments transactions between crypto and traditional assets with enterprise blockchains. Now, Corda Settler uses XRP, but it does say uh, as the first and only supported cryptocurrency for settlement asset on the platform, listen here, as they plan to expand in the future. So it says down here, XRP is the next logical step in showing how widespread acceptance of the use of digital asset can transfer a value to make payments and can be achieved. It also says in here, if I find here, while the Settler will be open to all forms of crypto and traditional assets, this demonstrates demonstration uh, uh, with XRP is the next logical step in showing how widespread acceptance of use of those digital assets can transfer value and payments. Okay, so moving through, because I don't want to have to read the whole thing to you again. Um, let's see, how does Corda Settler work? So basically, it plugs into, it, it taps into Swift's GPI system. So let's talk about this. The platform is still in its first stages of development. This article is a year old. Corda Settler supports payments of all sorts to be settled through any parallel rail supporting cryptocurrencies or other crypto assets. Also, any traditional rail capable of providing cryptographic proof of settlement can settle payment obligations. In the next phase of development, the settler will also support domestic deferred net settlement and real-time gross settlement payments. Now, what's interesting in here is the next logical step that they talked about using XRP as the uh, asset crypto asset for settlement is the interoperability. It's obvious. 
Okay, in its current phase at the time a year ago, when a payment obligation arises quarter blockchain during the course of business any day, parties involved now have the option to request settlement using XRP. The other party can be notified that the settlement in XRP has been requested and that they must instruct a payment to the required address before the specified deadline presented to them. Okay, so then let's see here uh, what the quarter settler means for parties involved. Instant settlement, basically. Uh, at the same time, it's not mandatory for sending party uh, XRP or any other cryptocurrency. They could choose what they want to settle with. That's the option. So now Swift partnership with Corda. End of January has announced a partnership with R3's Corda Settler to launch a proof of concept. The trial would see the interaction of Swift payment standard uh, framework GPI global payments innovation with R3 trade finance platform following the recent launch of our quarter seller allowing the payments or obligations raised in the quarter platform. It was a logical extension to plug in Swift GPI has rapidly became the new standard to settle payments right across the world. All blockchain applications running on quarter will thus benefit from the fast, secure, transparent settlement provided by Swift GPI banks, said David Rudder, CEO of R3. The other important thing to understand is that the GPI side from Swift is still a messaging platform. OK, and plugging into Corda and the Corda platform and having access to the Corda settler allows that messaging system to now have finality and settlement of payment, which it does not have on its own. So that's a key thing to remember there. So R3 Corda platform and, and the ability to access the Corda settler and XRP is the cryptocurrency of choice at the moment. And you could choose other cryptocurrencies, but I can tell you that wall garden and friction that exists, whether it's digital or fiat money, can be settled with XRP. I think we all understand the interoperability there. Now, okay, moving here to the announcement recently from Finextra a year later, just 13 hours ago, Ripple claims to have become the first blockchain-focused payments company to join the ISO 20022 standardization committee, future proofing its business for the eventual arrival of a data-rich messaging protocol. Bingo. And that's exactly what they're doing here. Now they're talking about how there's been uh, uh, testy exchanges between SWIFT and the European Central Bank over the surprise decision by the interbank messaging network to shift the ISO 20022 migration date from cross-border payments for cross-border payments to not from November 21, uh, but to now the end of 22. For Ripple, a closer connection to that ISO network will help it drive interoperability with global payments networks and add a sheen of regulatory legitimacy to its proprietary cryptocurrency XRP. Well said, well said, well said. OK, that that is exactly right, because, again, what I'm talking about here is Ripple Net, right? And the XRP protocol and the ability to source between that. And remember how Ripple Net is a cloud based services with over 300 and some partners and the governance, the compliance, everything is built into the network just as it is built into the XRP protocol. Right. It's it's all there ready to use. This is, in fact, what they're designed to do. All right, so now let's go on here further. Here is the actual announcement from Ripple on their site. Just a short little mention of how they're walking closer to it. Uh, Ripple is now part of the ISO 202 standards body, the first member discussed by distributed or focused on distributed ledger technology, DLT. Now, this is a great article just given to me by uh, Leonidas. XRP Arcade does amazing work. I've had the pleasure of meeting uh, Leonidas and hanging out with him at Swell. He is an amazing researcher, guys. I would definitely go read this article. I'm just going to scroll down here and show you that he discusses and covers all of this quite well. And then he talks here, indeed, uh, uh, RippleNet is one of the members of the Registration Management Group, RMG, according to the ISO 20022 website. Uh, this is why Leonidas is amazing. About the Registration Management Group, the RMG, is made for senior industry experts nominated by the registered member entities. The RMG was created in 2004 and had its first meeting in 2005. 
uh, in January, RMG is the highest ISO 20022 registration body. It supervises the overall registration process and reports to ISO TC68 slash SC9. The role of RMG is to promote and support involvement of the financial service actors to facilitate the registration and maintenance of high quality global relevant ISO 20022 compliant business models for exchange of information for financial services. The mission of RMG is to ensure the ISO 20022 is a trusted standard providing high quality business models for exchange of information for financial services. The RMG defines the scope of necessary SEGs, approves businesses justification for new messages and allocates them to one or more SEGs. The RMG also acts as a court of appeal in case of conflict between RA, TSG, and the SEGs and the organizations that want to develop ISO 20022 messages. Members of the RMG include Actus CFTC, Clearstream, DTCC, Euroclear, European Central Bank, European Payments Council, Fixed Protocol LTD, ISDA FPML, I, uh, ISTIC, is, or ISTIC, uh, ISITC, MasterCard, NACHA, IFX Forum, Nexo, AISBL, SWIFT, Visa International, Bank of England, and yes, RippleNet. <laughs> RMG has 37 delegations from the following member entities, and it lays it down here as a chart of all of those that he just mentioned here. RippleNet is being represented by Marcus Treachers, as a Senior VP Customer Success, and Jeremy Light, VP of EU Strategic Accounts, and Anthony Rouse, the Product Manager. Yeah, guys, if you want to support Leonidas, there's his Patreon link right there at the bottom. Uh, let me tell you something. First of all, thank you to Leonidas. It is excellent information on top of what we already know. You know, I, I am taken back to... Uh, the video and the interview, which I didn't have time to pull up today, of Brad Garlinghouse sitting with the 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 lady who was interviewing him on on a news show, and he says, "I believe, in fact, what we are doing is dismantling SWIFT." Now, when I think of that that moment and read these things, I say to myself, "Well, first of all, SWIFT is owned by a private consortium of." or a consortium of private banks, okay? And I can't help but feel like, because RippleNet is designed as its large partnership, and by the way, those over 300 partners that are on there, a lot of those are large banks, and not surprisingly enough, that are tied back into SWIFT. So it would appear to me that where we're moving to I think is it a, is a ability for to see a union between Swift and uh, R three and Ripple and RippleNet, and the reason I believe that is because if the RippleNet is the largest banks in the world, and you know they're tied into Swift and behind Swift, then it would seem to me as the innovation proves out with XRP and the cloud based services of RippleNet. And having all the compliance and contractual agreements and governance and all these things done well, as well as the security, the scalability, and the interoperability that XRP provides, as well as the RippleNet cloud-based services, it seems to me that over time, why wouldn't Swift acquire RippleNet, not Ripple, but RippleNet, the cloud-based services, as a new digital part or new digital arm to what Swift already provides. And I also see whether or not the rumor is true that Ripple may or may not have acquired R3. I still see a place for R3 to exist with Corda platform because this platform allows all the other businesses and banks, lower tier banks, to build on this, this Corda platform to build their application to plug into Swift or and or RippleNet, depending on what their needs are, whether they're deemed that they should be on that network. And this, to me, seems like, yeah, okay, whether or not R3 remains a, a standalone company or whether they become acquired, and then someday maybe RippleNet 
becomes a part of SWIFT as its new digital arm. It just seems to make sense when you have some of the largest banks on RippleNet, and we know that the largest banks actually are private members of SWIFT itself. But in any, any business, the technology and the innovation has to prove out, and it has to grow legs of its own. Nobody's just going to give it a pass. And the only way to do that in business is to incentivize someone to acquire you or merge with you by putting pressure on them. And the way to do that is to have the innovation and a system design, as well as XRP, the ILP, the XRP Ledger, and RippleNet, and create that business incentive for someone or entities like a Swift to take a real hard look at what they're able to do and realize at some point, you're going to have to have access to that innovation and that tech to stay alive. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. If you like the content, hit the like and subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one. Take care.